Hello, hello, hello! It's your favorite neutrophil phylum back at it again with a human versus germ matchup analysis. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most annoying matchups in the game human versus mycobacterium tuberculosis, or TB for short. Now, TB is a part of the bacteria faction, meaning that the typical flow of the game will involve TB invading and getting eaten by phagocytes. But what makes TB a particularly annoying matchup for human mains is how TB manages to consistently outplay this strategy in the most rage quit inducing way possible. But before we look at this matchup, let's first learn a bit more about TB's history as a player. In the early days, the matchup between humans and TB was so biased that TB earned the title of the most deadly infectious agent right before the hot upcoming challenger COVID-19 splashed onto the scene. Back then, TB went by the name White Death, a gamer tag so cringe you knew either TB was compensating for something or really had the skills to back this up. Early game TB human matchups were such a wash for humans that they ended up coping by calling their own losses romantic and graceful instead of horrible and tragic. So how did TB evolve to smack down human mains? And how can humans learn to counterplay this historically uneven matchup? A typical HVTB game is initiated once a human player comes into contact with respiratory droplets containing TB. Once TB enters the body, they are quickly scouted by the lung's resident macrophage. Macrophages are, in general, a late game option in the innate immune system tech tree. These cells have some insane synergies with other units like helper T cells and B cells of the adaptive immune tech line, as well as containing some broad utility like wound healing. To combat infection, the macrophage's typical strategy is just to spam all their skills. Consume, digest, and finally, signal. Consume and digest are pretty straightforward skills to explain. The macrophage envelops TB in a pocket called the phagosome, then merges that pocket with an acidic bomb containing some of the nastiest chemicals available in the human tech tree called the lysosome. The damage over time is so severe here that many germs are instantly wiped out if the macrophage is allowed to get set up. Then, using the corpse of the germ, the macrophage activates its signal ability, giving a global buff to immune cells battling that same germ. TB, however, developed some incredible counterplay, turning the meta on its head. While the consume digest combo basically spells game over for TB, TB mains adapted. TB makes an assortment of proteins and glycans that prevent the lysosome from acidifying, as well as preventing the lysosome from fusing with the phagosome, completely stuffing the macrophages' attempt at control. And while macrophages on average are truly top tier units, the alveolar macrophage, the actual macrophage that TB first attacks, are pretty trash tier. And I don't mean to say that to be mean, I mean they are literally trashed here. The alveolar macrophage evolved to clean trash like dust, smoke, and corpses of dead cells out of the lungs. This unit's signal ability was also actually nerfed over time. After all, if the alveolar macrophage started spamming the signal ability, the lung would constantly be in the state of inflammation, and that's not good. So TB begins its attack on these support casters and finds itself what is called a permissive niche. A nice, cozy place to build a base of operations and begin the swarm. Anybody who has been tower rushed before knows the pain of your opponent building in your base. So the macrophage evolved a bit of clever counterplay of its own, including nutrient restriction, heavy metal poisoning, antimicrobial peptide production, just to name a few. These skills require a special kind of mana only generated by switching to glycolysis mode, an alternate metabolic profile that macrophages can switch to to increase mana generated by breaking down sugar into pyruvate. But TB has a counterplay to that too. Not only can TB manipulate the macrophage's ability to enter glycolysis mode, TB also manipulates the macrophage into pooling fatty acids into lipid droplets which TB can gather for a high yield resource. I know, I know, TB is incredibly overpowered and is in need of a balance patch yesterday. The reason why there are still human mains around is that human mains are notoriously tenacious, and over time a truly desperate strategy evolved, the granuloma. 
See, understanding that the Macrophage versus TB matchup was so incredibly one-sided, the Macrophages realized that their only hope for a comeback would have to come at a loss. The Macrophages would shift from a catch-and-kill playstyle to a hardcore battle of attrition. Human mains would mass Macrophages from all over the body to the site of infection. Some of these macrophages would morph into epithelioid cells, flat zipper-like cells that plug the holes in between other macrophages. Some macrophages even fuse their membranes to become giant cells. Overall, this results in a wall-off of the infected site, giving map control back to the human player. But is this enough? Over time, the raging battle in the lungs is enough to cause many human mains to quit. Those who persist end up with a very, very long battle on their hands. Because while the granuloma is pretty good at restricting the infection locally, TB is so good at surviving within macrophages that it doesn't ever really fully die. What results is a forever battle between TB and the human player, with TB occasionally breaking out of containment and causing another battle, and the immune system beating TB back. For many human mains, this is about as good as it gets, and to be fair, many human mains still battling this disease have it under control and are able to live pretty normal lives in spite of infection. But for others, whose immune system has been weakened one way or another, it can often result in a premature GG. Recently though, human mains have been eating pretty good, as the discovery of the modern medicine tech tree has caused many a germ to fade into irrelevance. But this meta is still in development, and so far the human ultimate vaccine has not been super effective in this matchup. One potential reason why the vaccine may not be very effective has to do with T cells. Vaccines work by training B cells and T cells to recognize pieces of proteins of germs called antigens. Infected cells display these antigens on their surface Surface, and once T cells bind to those antigens, the T cell will trigger the controlled demolition of the infected cell. This process is called apoptosis and is invoked by the T cell as a strategy to deny germs the means to replicate. One reason why the current vaccine may not be super effective may have to do with the speed by which T cells learn to recognize TB. If TB is allowed to set up in the lung at all, the battle becomes that much more difficult. So, hypothetically, if humans develop the tech needed to allow T cells to recognize TB antigens, and destroy TB before the formation of a granuloma, then ideally a vaccine could prevent TB infection altogether, or at the very least, help keep it contained. Human mains at MIT are using a tech called mass spectrometry to figure out exactly which proteins infected cells display on their surface, potentially leading to a super effective TB vaccine. You might be wondering, vaccines are not the only option in the modern medicine tech line. What about antibiotics? Hiding in the granuloma allows TB to really level up its drug resistance passive ability. After all, it's really difficult to land the drug skill shot through layers and layers of cells. But all this means is that perfecting the utilization of the vaccine alt becomes a much higher priority for human mains. And once that day comes, maybe then the meta will finally shift in the human's favor. To end this analysis, I'm going to put TB on a tier list of germs. Now the game of life is only lost if no member of a species is able to pass down its genes. As much as I, a representative of the immune system, hate most germs, I must make clear that life does not evolve to kill life. Life evolves to survive, and so this tier list must be evaluated not on how deadly a germ is, but how effective it is at staying alive. TB's ability to exploit a weak macrophage and force a containment strategy that hinders the human's drug ability easily earns it an S tier ranking, setting the bar high for germs to follow. 